commitments, which is to peak carbon emissions before 2030 and reach carbon neutrality before 20, uh, by 2060, that sort of rollback of coal will need to accelerate rapidly in the mid-2020s. All right, thanks so much for your thoughts this evening. And Dr. Jackson Ewing, Senior Fellow at Duke University. The Australian state of New South Wales has recorded its lowest daily number of COVID-19 infections in two months. There are 360 new cases and five deaths. The, dra the drop comes a day after businesses across Sydney reopened following months of lockdown. Uh, we want businesses uh, to look forward to what is going to be a bright summer here in New South Wales. Uh, there's a lot of build-up demand, as we saw yesterday, as people went out and spent uh, and supported their local neighbour businesses. Uh, that's what this is all about, giving confidence to businesses so that they succeed um, over the summer months. It's going to be boom time in New South Wales for every single business and every single worker across our state. Meanwhile, Victoria is looking to recruit up to 1,000 healthcare workers from overseas to ease pressure on the state's hospital system. Case numbers have declined for the third day in a row. There are more than 1,450 new infections, but health officials remain cautious. They say it is too early to know if numbers have peaked. New Zealand is looking to administer a record 100,000 coronavirus vaccine doses in a single day. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has dubbed the mass immunization drive this weekend as Super Saturday. She has also announced a televised Vaxathon. It will include real time data on the inoculation progress of regions. About 58% of the eligible population is fully vaccinated. New Zealand is seeking to accelerate vaccinations before further easing curbs. The country has recorded 43 new infections, most of them in Auckland. This Saturday, all across the country, we are pushing the vaccination message. Super Saturday is your chance to roll up your sleeve for New Zealand and help make us one of the most vaccinated and therefore protected countries in the world. We can ease restrictions dramatically without seeing a big surge in cases that could overwhelm our health services. So instead of big surges in cases, we want to see a big surge in vaccinations this week. South Korea is donating AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines to Vietnam and Thailand. The first batch is set to arrive as early as tomorrow. Vietnam is expected to receive 1.1 million shots. For Thailand, it's 470,000. South Korea has already inoculated nearly 80% of its 52 million population with at least one dose. Authorities say they have enough shots to cover their own people while helping other countries. Seoul is donating the vaccine to key trading partners in Southeast Asia. It says it will consider additional support to other nations in need after taking stock of its vaccine supply and inoculation rate. There's uncertainty among hawkers and coffee shop operators here in Singapore a day before vaccination differentiated measures take effect. Now, some of them aren't sure how to implement the rules. Authorities say they're taking a practical approach, like conducting spot checks and reminders. And they say hawkers don't need to do anything for now. With their crowds of diners eating and chatting in close proximity, the health ministry says Singapore's hawker centres and coffee shops remain high-risk areas as the country battles a rapid rise in COVID-19 cases. From Wednesday, patrons who are not fully vaccinated will only be allowed to enter these places to take away food items. They won't be allowed to dine in. But the wide open eating spaces at hawker centres could pose a problem when it comes to enforcement. The Bukit Mera Shop Owners and Hawker Association hopes that authorities will deploy more manpower to conduct their spot checks. But they're awaiting news on how or even if they still need to work with authorities. Some are afraid the checks will affect their business, especially during peak hours. <laughs> Only 
Over at the Tiong Bahru market, its Hawkers Association chairperson says it'll be tough to check on every dine-in customer. If it doesn't have a vaccine, it can also get those who have a vaccine people to buy. So it's a bit difficult. Hawkers that CNA spoke to say they'll ask their customers verbally if they have been vaccinated just to be safe. But the National Environment Agency assures hawkers and coffee shop operators that they don't have to check the vaccination status of their customers. Instead, it'll deploy safe distancing officers to conduct spot checks. Still, everyone will have to do their part. That's the message in a Facebook video by Ministers Lawrence Wong and Ong Yi Kang. We are really rely on the coffee shop operators to see how best they can implement this new measure. On the government's part, we will do spot checks. All of us must do our part. We must exercise responsibility. And coffee shop operators are rising to the call. They do not have designated check-in points. But some are now thinking of turning their drink stalls into a checkpoint for people to show their vaccinated status. Manpower, however, will be an issue. The problem is that you need to have manpower to do the checking. That means you have to employ more staff, then you evolve costs. But this is a worry by the coffee shop operator. All that remains is the part the public also has to play. Sustainability and the Environment Minister Grace Fu echoes Minister Wong's call for people to behave responsibly. So at our hawker centres and coffee shops, we require operators to remind their patrons as they walk in uh, that if they are not vaccinated, that they shouldn't dine in. We will have posters and we will also use our public announcement systems where applicable to constantly remind diners. Minister Fu says seating arrangements at crowded areas will also be reviewed to ensure that everyone stays safe. Should taking the COVID-19 jab be made mandatory? The issue has come under fresh scrutiny in one American state. The governor of Texas has issued an executive order that effectively bans any vaccine mandate. I want you to know. Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott barred any COVID-19 vaccine mandates in his state, including for private company employees or customers. Abbott's move comes a month after President Joe Biden's call for businesses across the country to fire workers who aren't vaccinated. At least a few thousand people have lost their jobs for refusing to comply. In an executive order on Monday, Abbott said, quote, In another instance of federal overreach, the Biden administration is now bullying many private entities into imposing COVID-19 vaccine mandates, causing workforce disruptions that threaten Texas's continued recovery. The White House had no immediate comment, but proponents of a vaccine mandate say it's needed to pull the nation out of the nearly two-year pandemic. Tech giants like Facebook and Google have told their Texas employees to prepare their proof of vaccination before returning to work. And American Airlines, the largest U.S. carrier based in the state, told its 100,000 employees in Fort Worth to submit their vaccination record by late November or be fired. Abbott has called on state lawmakers to take up the issue in an upcoming special session. Disaster is looming just off the coast of Yemen. Researchers say that a possible oil spill from an abandoned tanker could be a catastrophe for millions of people. The condition of the vessel, the FSO SAFA, is getting worse. It hasn't been maintained since the conflict in Yemen began in 2015. Only a skeleton crew remains on board, along with over one million barrels of oil. Now, a spill was already averted just last year, but the situation remains dicey as the tanker's crew continues to pump seawater out of the vessel. Experts are warning that a spill could occur at any time, and the consequences could be dire. Researchers estimate around nine million people could go without drinking water. The tanker also has to be repaired first before any oil can be offloaded. Here's a look at some of the other stories we're tracking for you on CNA Digital. India has recommended Bharat Biotech's COVID-19 shot for emergency use in children aged 2 to 18 years. It's the first vaccine in the country to get approval for use in those below the age of 12. French President Emmanuel Macron has announced a plan worth $35 billion to re-industrialize France. 
That as the country aims to reclaim its crown as a global leader in innovation. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says the government will scrutinize the impact on the economy from any further declines in the yen. Shares in Thailand's hotels and airlines have jumped following Prime Minister Prayut Janosha's announcement that more vaccinated tourists will be allowed to visit from next month. And the 2022 World Rugby Seven Series will kick off with rounds starting in Dubai next month. While Hong Kong returns as a stop, Australia and New Zealand will not host the series due to COVID-19. You can keep up with news in Asia and beyond 24-7 on CNA Digital. Still to come, Taiwan is seeking Australia's support in its bid to join a mega trade pact. And fears the illegal wildlife trade will flourish again as border restrictions are lifted across Asia. Once the PM announced the circuit breaker, my heart just dropped to the ground. But tough times build tough people. Yet yeah, we will go around the house and find the materials to make my toys. We all alike in the ways that we collaborate to create more possibilities. Ideas versus Pandemic Sunday on CNA. From the top stories in Asia. A quicker, portable way of testing for COVID-19 in just five minutes. To breaking news in the US and Europe. US President-elect Joe Biden is set to formally introduce his top economic team. With an eye on markets opening across the world. Wall Street's major indices all closed the month with double-digit percentage gains. It's the one bulletin that offers you a global perspective. World Tonight, daily on CNA. Are you ready? I don't think I can be completely ready. Every time I face death at work, it's never easy. There would be complications with surgery. You can't predict what's going to happen. Yeah. You start second guessing and you start blaming yourself. If it's a womb infection, then it's very, very bad. There's definitely that few patients that always linger in your mind. No pulse, right? Ah. Pump, 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 this. At the Vets, Sunday on CNA. Feast your eyes on scrumptious Korean chicken dishes available in Gangnam. From the top traditional offerings to the latest trends on offer. So don't miss your chance to discover poultry perfection. Gangnam Insider's Picks, Sunday on CNA. This program is brought to you by the Gangnam Goo Office. Discover passions this October. Examine how the once undisputed king of the gaming world is fighting back to dominate the industry again. Keep going, keep going. Follow the individuals who found a creative spark in the midst of the darkness. Meet the people who have found a way to juggle their passion and their work. Why do they do it? This October on CNA. What are the financial forces driving Asia's rise? From transnational business expansions and technology for digital growth to untapped opportunities in the region and beyond, understand the trends, innovations and corporate deals that are Building Asia. On Asia First, Monday mornings on CNA. Watching Asia tonight here on CNA, and it's time for more business news with Elizabeth. Thanks, Steve. Well, Intel and Samsung are looking to resume full operations in Vietnam's Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, factories in Saigon High Tech Park could begin as soon as uh, the end of next month. It is seen as a move that could provide relief to global supply chains. Uh, Saigon High Tech Park is working with tenants to resume full operations. Many of them are currently running at about 70 percent capacity. Uh, COVID-19 infections have prompted movement restrictions in some factory 
Belt. Intel reduced its operations while Samsung shut around one-fifth of its workshops. Now, the South Korean electronics giant also cut its workforce at a complex by more than half. A Saigon High Tech Park is home to many factories that produce components and services for global corporations. Now, Taiwan is uh, seeking Australia's support in its bid to join the CPTPP. A top Taiwanese diplomat appeared before a parliamentary inquiry in Canberra to emphasize Taiwan's merit as a member of the Pan-Pacific Trade Pact. He said Taiwan can help to boost high technology trade flows and demand for Australian minerals. Now, China is Australia's largest trading partner, but diplomatic relations have soured in recent years. Taiwan wants to step up economic cooperation cooperation with Australia in the face of Chinese sanctions. Taiwan formally applied to join the CPTPP last month, just a week after China did the same. And their bids have sparked tensions with Beijing opposing Taiwan's application and Taiwan accusing Beijing of bullying. Well, the regional trade group formed in 2018 currently includes 11 countries. It has also received applications from Britain. Now, all 11 members of the pact will need to reach a consensus to allow these countries to join. And together, they represent about 13 percent of global GDP. At the International Monetary Fund, Executive Board has backed and battered Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva. The Global Lenders Board says it has full confidence in her leadership. And the IMF has concluded that Ms. Georgieva did not play an improper role regarding the Doing Business report when she was president of the World Bank. She was accused of pressuring st staff to change data to boost China's ranking in that report. EasyJet says travel is back. The budget carrier says it generated positive cash flow in the peak summer months after European countries eased restrictions. The UK airline has also cut the year earlier $1.5 billion pandemic loss in half. The airline is now boosting its capacity to 70% of its pre-pandemic level as demand for winter holidays grow and some business travel resumes. China's auto sales continue to tumble for the fifth straight month. They fell nearly 20% in September from a year earlier to around 2 million vehicles. The global shortage of semiconductors is largely to blame. Still, demand for new energy vehicles remains strong. Tesla posted its highest sales of China-made cars, while Volkswagen and NIO sold over 10,000 vehicles each. Authorities expect figures to improve in the next three months as supply shortage eases. And that's your business update. Back to you, Steve. Thanks, Liz. There are concerns that illegal wildlife trade could pick up as COVID-19 travel restrictions ease. Trade volumes in Southeast Asia before the pandemic were already one of the highest in recent history. Mei Wong finds out why this was the case in the second of CNA's two-part series on the illicit trade. Viewers may find some images in the following story distressing. Pangolin scales remain one of the most sought-after wildlife products. Some use the scales in traditional Chinese medicine, believing it has health benefits. Although the demand for such products for consumption has reduced due to the scare of diseases originating from wildlife, experts fear the illegal business may flourish again soon. We are concerned about uh, a post-COVID uh, scenario where uh, the traders, after having accumulated so much wildlife, will try to find a way to get rid of it as, as soon as possible. Uh, so we can expect a, an increase in volumes um, of, of trade within uh, Southeast Asia uh, specifically, uh, as soon as the restrictions will be lifted. According to USAID Wildlife Asia, before the COVID pandemic in 2019, it saw 82 reported pangolin seizures in countries like Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam. Almost 156,000 kilograms of products were seized. But last year, the number of seizures dropped by half to about 50 and close to 10,000 kilograms of scales. We have a demand that might have had a temporary slowdown but has not dropped completely or there's no indication of the fact that it will, it will be gone for good. 
Even with pandemic restrictions still in place, authorities in Thailand registered some 480 cases involving illegal wildlife last year. That amounted to a value of almost 5 million Thai baht or 152,000 US dollars. And in 2021, even before the year is up, the Thai authorities have already reported at least 620 wildlife trade cases. One major haul was the confiscation of 100 wildlife.